So today we're going to be looking at a file we found off of malware.com and starting off looking in PE Studio. Just get a quick overview. Here we can see quite a few hits, a lot of generic hits. And sections looks like it is UPX packed. So we'll go ahead and throw that in CFF Explorer for its quick uh, UPX utility to get that unpacked. So here we're just looking through the strings to show that uh, the first one is indeed packed, not very much uh, visible, and the second one we can see down the way here that the strings are intact. So throwing the unpacked version into PE Studio to again get a quick overview. So starting up FakeNet just to uh, make sure our network communications are captured when we run this dynamically. And starting up Buster Sandbox here just to get a quick behavioral analysis out of the file. Here we see the file in action. Uh, this is actually a ransomware program called Elmer's Glue, and it's wanting $150 worth of uh, bitcoins in order to unlock your machine. Unlike most ransomware, this doesn't actually encrypt any files. What it does is remains the topmost application on your machine so that you can't use your machine. And it, uh, supposedly when you pay the money it, they'll give you the code to unlock your machine and you can, can continue using it as normal. But right now we'll go ahead and look through Sandboxy for any files that were dropped out. And we do see a few here. So we went from a packed file to an unpacked file to a file that was dropped out. And here we throw the file that was dropped out into PE Studio once again to get a quick overview. Quite a few legible strings down here at the bottom. And we see that uh, familiar message, don't poke me, which we saw earlier. And a long string here, which uh, seems a bit unusual. And uh, the unique-ish idea of the machine. So we throw the .NET executable into dnspy, which will go ahead and uh, semi-decompile the the original source so we can look through the file. And 
viewing a quick analysis in the Buster Sandbox reveals uh, what we've already seen that the Elmer's Glue 3 file was dropped out and that persistence was uh, achieved through the start menu and startup folders. Drilling down into the file, we'll go ahead and look at some of the code. And it looks like there's two forms. And just scrolling through, looking for anything that uh, looks out of place, looks suspicious. We'll go back to the first form and scroll down all the way to the bottom. Particularly we're looking for the legible strings that we saw earlier, like Don't Poke Me, which triggered an event. Um, considering the Decrypt key is close to that. They should be relatively close to each other in the forms. And here we see the ID portion. There's some button click events getting closer. And here we see the long string of numbers which uh, looked a little out of place earlier and it's associated with a compare string um, considering this is supposed to have a unlock key um, it's a good idea to go ahead and try that as the unlock key so we'll run it dynamically again and see what happens and the computer's unlocked. So this ransomware really, um, while it's simplistic, it, it can be effective, um, but the, the claims that each computer has its unique ID and uh, uh, unlock key and everything is actually false because the unlock key is embedded within the file. So as long as you can paste that in there, uh, you can successfully unlock your machine without paying the actors. And here's just a quick summary of what happened. Uh, the original file was UPX packed, so we unpacked it pretty easy. The unpacked file dropped out a .NET executable, and that in itself dropped out another executable, which was the ransomware itself. Persistence was set up through the startup folder, which is pretty common in most malware. Typical cleanup routine was achieved through a batch file which just deleted the original file. And here, uh, once again, uh, no money is needed in order to unlock the machine. The key is actually within the file and it should be pretty universal. And if it's not, uh, it's pretty easy to find, especially in .NET files since they can be decompiled back to pseudo source.